We make sure that they have tried Cenovamate in many occasions. The question that always comes in these meetings that we have as doctors, epileptologists, neuro uh, neurologists, the radiologists, the uh, social worker, everything, the psychologists, everything we discuss patient, complex patients to evaluate if they are candidates for surgeries. And uh, one recurring question is always, have this patient tried Cenovamate? Fellow homo sapiens, welcome to, or welcome back to Epilepsy Sparks Insights. Who has heard of the drug Cenovamate? If you haven't yet, well, do get out your notepad to hear from neurologist Ricardo Mocos, who explains how Sonobamate may be that magic pill for heaps of people who currently, so far, have a refractory, uncontrollable focal epilepsy. Please do note that this is not an endorsement of any particular anti-seizure medication, Sonobamate or any of the others mentioned. And any questions or ideas from a patient or a carer must be brought up with one's neurologist slash epileptologist. Please don't forget to share your thoughts on this episode with us in the comments below. Like the episode and do subscribe so that we can educate and empower both both more people affected by the epilepsies and indeed more clinicians with patients who have an epilepsy to provide the best care possible. Hello, I'm Ricardo. I'm an epilepsy fellow at Madrid in Vitas Hospitals and also a neurologist and I take care of children and adults with epilepsy. Both, that sounds quite challenging to do both children and adults. Yes, and as a fellow, I'm trying to learn uh, the epilepsy across all ages, from the early one or two years old uh, children to the old people. I think it's, it's good when you're learning. Then, of course, later in life, you sometimes have to pick sides. But, <laughs> but I think it's, it's interesting to have this whole perspective and I, I having it in my fellow, so it's, it's nice. And so you're currently a neurologist, but are you going to become an epileptologist then? Yeah, it's a two-year program and we learn about epilepsy and also EEG because I th we think that both uh, things go all, all the way together. So you have to learn a lot about EEG and a lot of our patients and their lives. We've spoken a bit about this before, but um, so there's a relatively new drug. Sonobamate is an anti-seizure medication that um, has not been around long, um, especially when we compare it to, I don't know, like phenytoin or e even like more, I don't know, sodium valproate or, you know, lamotrigin. It's a quite a new drug. Can you tell us a bit about that and, um, and what you think of this medication, please? Cenovamate is, uh, is one of our new tools. It was approved in the US in, 19, uh, in 2019 and in the European Union in 2021. So it's one of our newer uh, tools that we have uh, to treat seizures. Um, and I think there's a, a big excitement around this medication because of its efficacy in clinical trial. Um, many of us as epileptologists, as neurologists, uh, we are considering this medication as a game changer for many people, especially with a focal onset seizure. Yeah, that's the main uh, use right now. Right, and so you say this is for, um, so people who have seizures that start in one part of their brain, they can become generalized seizures, but they it's established that the seizures start in just one focal part of the brain. Yeah, initially the indication was for focal uh, epilepsies, um, that those type of epilepsy are usually uh, the ones that are more complex and more difficult to treat. So usually all the clinical trials start with this uh, population of patients and then we expand the medication. So right now we are doing studies to understand how uh, well works in Ovamate for generalized onset epilepsy. Okay. Um, so probably and also it's approved in, uh, in America and in Europe for adults, for people older, older than uh, 18 years old. But we are also studying it in children because it's, it's uh, also probably uh, very e efficacy. And what is that success rate? When it, uh, by success at the moment, I'm talking about uh, stopping and preventing seizures in the people who take it. So every time we discuss this uh, efficacy, we have to see three different uh, type of studies. One is the clinical trials are the one that um, regulatory agencies look, and those are usually three months follow up patients in a very controlled setting. Then comes one year follow up. Those are called open level extension studies. Uh, where you can uh, change uh, things, change the other medications, and the patient and the doctor knows 
they all uh, they both know that they are uh, getting getting the medication because the first uh, the clinical trials are double blinded usually or you don't know if you are getting the medication or the placebo right and then you have the uh, real world data that we call it is uh, the series that the different hospitals publish about their own experience with real patient that we call in real life with uncontrolled setting i mean pro uh, people with their problems with their other medications so it's regular people like yeah. Yeah. going to the hospital and uh, they are being follow up uh, uh, in registries. So every every type of study has pro and cons. But uh, if we see uh, in Cenovamate, all of them show more or less the same results. That's a, it's a very good thing. And uh, the, um, the result from the clinical trial show that the responder rate, that is, uh, that's what we call when patient reduce at least 50% of the seizures. Okay. Uh, the higher dose was m around 60%. Uh, six out of 10 people with this very drug resistant epilepsy uh, responded at least with 50% reduction of the reduction of the seizures. So those results uh, were never seen with any other drugs right uh, uh, before Sanovamate. Gosh, so with other drugs, well, uh, just to compare it with uh, some of the other anesthesia medications, it, you know, how does 50 to 60 percent compare? In this in this uh, population, usually all the drugs show maximum uh, half of their efficacy, efficacy. And if we see maybe the number uh, is easy to understand if we see the seizure. Right. Seizure freedom rate at uh, the dose between 200 and 400. Uh, differs, of course, the higher the dose, the higher the chances you have to be seizure free. But it's around in the clinical trial it was around 20%. The seizure freedom rate of Senovamate is 20%. And we know um, from the statistics that uh, when we have a drug resistant patient, after uh, three, four, five medications, yeah. the success rate is less Fine. than. Yeah, one percent, two percent, three percent. Usually, that's why we uh, indicate uh, the evaluation for epilepsy surgery in patient with focal epilepsy. And so we we we've seen twenty percent with a higher dose uh, in the clinical trial of seizure freedom. That's that is a game changer that can save people from uh, surgery. Even uh, if we are evaluating a patient for a surgery. Uh, this is a long way. Sometimes it takes time to evaluate and to uh, do the surgery. And in the meantime, what we are doing in many epilepsy uh, surgery uh, centers and units is trying Senovamate in the meantime, just to see if, we, if this patient reduces the seizure uh, or is even seizure free and we can save the surgery and this can happen. That's cool. So you're basically, you've got somebody in who working towards potential surgery. So going through all the different, you know, things that they must do. So like certain EEGs or whether it be regular intracranial, whatever. And at the same time, pushing them on this new drug just to see. So they don't fall off the list for surgery should they need it. But maybe this drug will work. We make sure that they have tried Sanovamate in many occasions. The question that always comes in these meetings that we have as doctor, epileptologists, neuro uh, neurologists, the radiologists, the uh, social worker, everything, the psychologists, everything we discuss patient, complex patients to evaluate if they are candidate for surgeries. And uh, one recurring question is always, have this patient tried Sanovamate or we should? Really? Yeah, everywhere. Yeah, that is why we call it a game changer because like all the newer medication that we have, we have advanced a lot in the uh, last 10 or 15 years in terms of security. These new drugs are more secure, have less side effects, but in terms of efficacy, they were not, uh, not good for this 30% of the patient with drug resistance epilepsy. They are still, they have been always a third of the patient and now we can yeah. act on those patients uh, with drugs. And so what are the potential negatives of this drug then? Because, you know, <laughs> it's often yeah. weighing up the pros and cons of, of these drugs. And like, you know, sometimes if you if you become seizure free, great, but is it great if the side effects are rubbish? So tell us about that. Senovamate has something that has a dual mechanism of action. So it has, acts on GABAergic neurons. Those are the inhibitory neurons and they increase the 
the levels of GABA, and then they block the sodium channel uh, because the sodium channel helps the neuron to depolarize and be excited. I mean, it's a, the excitatory um, transmission. Um, and so uh, usually, I, as we use the Novamate in this uh, population that is very drug resistant, I think this will change in the future. We will use it more, but right now we are using it in difficult to treat patient. Um, usually as the Novamate has this mechanism of action, it can interact with other drugs that act uh, acts on the same level on those okay. receptors. So for GABAergic uh, drugs, uh, usually we see somnolence, okay? And for um, sodium channel blockers, the most common side effects are uh, dizziness, uh, ataxia, or double vision. Okay. Uh, those are the most common side effects. The good thing is, and this is a big challenge for us as a doctors, uh, as doctors, is that when when you use an overmate, as it's so effective, you should reduce concomitant medication to prevent or uh, to help to alle alleviate side effects. Sorry, what's concomitant medication? What's that? It's the other anti-seizure medication that you are uh, on before taking Sonovamate. Okay. Usually, because those are usually people drugs resistant. Yeah. Well, sometimes they, are, they were partially effective, so it's good mm. because it gives you this opportunity to discuss with the patients. Okay, let's review your medication with, because now we have to make, make room for a new medication that it will probably, at least statistically, uh, be more effective than all of those. But uh, mm. sometimes you can decrease the dose of the other anti medication. Sometimes you can uh, just uh, take it off. Uh, and so I think it has, it is complicated, and this is one of the things that limited, that has limited its use because you have to be confident and reduce other medication once the side effects start. And if you don't have any side effects, you usually can reduce other medication because of efficacy. You say, okay, we are now in a, in a situation where we have reduced the seizure, let's take out uh, this medication or this. If you have side effects, you do it quite quickly. So there are some recommendations that I suggest all the clinicians that they should read uh, to, uh, from the biggest centers in the world. One, the one Spanish consensus and another one from America that tells you how to manage this anti other anti seizure medication to prevent side effects. Of course, sometimes we cannot prevent it all, but um, we can reduce and solve them. And, and at the same time, being able to enjoy, let's say, the benefits of having a, an effective anti seizure medication. But this is not easy to do. It takes time. And sometimes in, during that journey, you have to see your doctor a little bit more frequently. And this is something we have to consider every time we use an Ovamate. We have a slow titration scheme every two weeks, uh, similar to Lamotrigine. And uh, during those weeks, we are adjusting the other anti seizure medication to prevent uh, side effects. And commonly, people will be on, say, antidepressants and stuff as well. It's not. It's often not just an anti seizure medication. So, does that need to be considered too? No, there's no interaction mainly with, with the main uh, and common anti uh, antidepressant or all the other, uh, or any other like common medication. It's usually uh, interactions are uh, in terms of the site of action, we call yeah. it called dynamic interaction, and also the kinetic of the drug uh, can change. The level of the drugs can change. So, uh, change. so if you are on uh, clovasam, for instance, that is a very common drug, as clovasam acts on GABA, GABA receptor, you should decrease the dose. That uh, we all know that, and so we usually reduce the dose of clovasam because it it works really well with sonogamate, but it has to be uh, clovasam at a very low dose, maybe five to ten milligrams, depending on the patient. But we usually reduce it because it will help sonogamate. But if you keep it uh, very in a very high level, in a very high dose, uh, you will have a lot of somnolence. 
or drowsiness. Going, uh, sort of continuing with the sort of uh, side effects, what about mood? Depression, anxiety, other mood disorders are very common in people with epilepsy. And sometimes as a result of taking medications, whether that's direct or indirect, whether it affects your cognitive function, that can cause you depression or whatever. What are the impacts of the drug when it comes to cognition and mental health? It has an, I mean, it has an indirect uh, effect uh, like lamotrigine or valparate, we know that they have a positive e effect on mood, for instance, uh, or depression. Cenovamide doesn't have this particular uh, mechanism of action or um, effect, but I think that it helps you. I mean, uh, it helps you to reduce medication that you already have that can have a negative effect. So at the end, it helps you to reduce the burden of the medication of the patient. And if you have a, a very effective medication that reduces seizures, then this will improve probably uh, quality of life and other aspects of your life. So uh, I have to say, particularly, this medication it doesn't have an, a, a positive effect on mood or uh, cognition in general. But <laughs> what we see when we evaluate in the long term, because of the reduction of the seizures, we see improvement in those areas. So at the end, you know, it's, uh, at the end it has an impact, but it's not by itself, let's say, like all the drugs have. Of course, it's a new medication and we will see long term, like 20 years. I mean, the first clinical trial has been yeah, uh, 10 years ago, so we have information. But of course, once we use uh, uh, the medication in the whole population, then we see other things. But it's more, more or less neutral. The only things, the precaution that we have to have uh, in our mind is that if we uh, increase those very quickly, we can have allergies. Oh, but only if you do it quickly. Exactly. Yeah, we reduce the risk like lamotrigine of this uh, allergy is called dress syndrome. It's basically skin rash, uh, yeah. plus other things like fevers and things. Uh, and so the, the titration period is, uh, is long. You increase those every two weeks and you have a a titration initiation pact. The medication comes in a box with all the, all the pills that you take two weeks, this dose, two weeks, this dose, and you increase those from 12.5 milligram up to usually uh, 200 milligram, very slow every two weeks. And in, in, in doing that, we have learned that you prevent these skin rushes and oh. the side effects. And it gives you time also to uh, talk about with your patient, with patient, about side effects because you are going really slow. So uh, you can discuss, oh, you are, have you noticed somnolence or drowsiness or double vision? Okay. And then you are adjusting all the time the other anti seizure medication. Thank you very much to Ricardo for sharing with us in part one of two such valuable insight into Sonobamate. Tune in to part two with Ricardo next week to hear about trying Sonobamate out from the perspectives of both a clinician and a person with an epilepsy. If you are interested in learning more, make sure that you check out the paper Spanish Consensus on the Management of Concomitant Anti-Seizure Medications When Using Sonobamate in Adults with Drug-Resistant Focal Seizures, the link to which you can find in the text below. Check out more about Ricardo and his work on the website toryrobinson.com, where you can also access the podcast video and transcription of this episode. And if you haven't already, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe to the channel. Share this episode with your friends, colleagues, family members, and see you next week.